Coach, the prevailing wisdom is that Caleb's got the Rookie of the Year locked up. Do you think Jaden can steal it from him? Yeah, d definitely. We saw it last year, right? There is the consensus number one pick, or pretty close to consensus number one pick, and we have a totally different result than what I think anybody expected. And I'd say the same thing is true for, for Jaden. I really liked him on college tape, not just because of uh, the plays that he made down the field, which there were uh, an impressive group of those. I thought he had a uh, good poise in the pocket. He wasn't trying to get out quickly all the time. But when he got out, it was like he was shot out of a cannon. He was, I, nobody timed him in the 40, but you don't need a 40 to watch on tape and go, God, that's really fast. It was really fast. <laughs> Who did this last? I, I'm telling you. No, and it, Coach has all these. So, sometimes, Coach, you have these like very intricate pre, intricate breakdowns where you're like, look, and when he's up against this coverage, you know, and then your breakdown on Jaden is like, he is very fast. <laughs> Guys, he is so fast. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was it's kind of like the, the Caleb Wild plays where yeah. the only, the, the, that's the only way you can describe it. It's like, I'm not sure what his numbers are. But you don't really need a watch to know he's right. outrun pretty much everybody else who's on the field. But I, I really liked the fact that that wasn't his first answer. He was trying to stay in the pocket. He was trying to make those plays work. And when things broke down, he took off. I know Nick hates him because he says he's too I, thin. The hate is not okay, fair. Nick I am. I don't like skinny, small quarterbacks. Oh. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't. It makes me nervous. Okay, That's I don't all know it how is. small he is, but he right, may be a little bit on the thin side. But look, he'll probably grow in his body. A lot of us do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I. He's not on those. My point is, I don't. The, my entire reservation about him is the exact same reservation I had about Bryce Young. One is too skinny, the other is too small, which is there is simply to me a, a threshold that if you, like a roller coaster, you must be this, this size for me to think I can spend a top three pick in the draft on you to play quarterback. Well, it's easier to he gain weight than it is to I, yeah, If he would have, he could have. If really? he could have, he would have. Yes, he's So everybody old. who graduates from college, that that's their when bar. I, see, Wherever they it. are, they can't I, change I'm their body you, at all. I'm telling you that right, if Justin, he if why was do we have easy, weight rooms? Because, Coach, if he, he, <laughs> he was at LSU with probably a better weight room than the commanders have, and he came out that size. That, to me, says he's not going to get much bigger. That's my only complaint about him, and it's just, it, it's just how I feel. I, I don't dislike the player. He's a great player. I just don't think he'll be able to stay... I, I Upright. think he does have a good chance of winning rookie of the year. You there know? we go. And look, and, and this is this kind of supports what you're saying because of his experience. I mean, five years, parts of five seasons in, in college football. He's 23. Look, he's going to be 24 in December. But I think that will allow him to adjust pretty quickly to the NFL. He does have weapons with McLaurin. Like, I, I actually think – he, if they have similar seasons, because he's got the benefit of playing without expectations. That's right. Everybody's expecting not only Caleb individually to play well, <clears throat> but him to lift that team, whereas uh, um, Daniels has the chance to really sure. develop without people expecting so much and, immediately. And CJ had a lot of that, too. Yep. If not, not only that, but a lot of people question whether or not he was drafted way too high based off of all the, the pre-draft concerns that came out of nowhere. October. Okay. So let's talk about this because there's a lot to talk about. First, I want to mention just off the top real fast of what Nick just said about if he could have gained weight, he would have. That's insanity. Um, we have no idea if he was trying to. We have no idea what the philosophy of his either personal philosophy or what the coaching was in the weight room, whatever it may be. That's insane. As someone who also understands human physiology pretty well in weight training and gaining weight, you can also see that just by looking at Jane Daniels, he's a little bit of a baby face. Like you can tell that his just physical maturity, I don't mean emotional maturity, his phys physiologically mature, you know, maturity is a little bit slower. I know he's a slightly a little bit older, but you can tell that he is still maturing and growing into his body. You, you can see that some of these guys hit puberty when they're freaking nine years old, man. And it's just like, they're just, you know, they're, they're just who they are. They're already shaving. Jaden is definitely, I don't want to say he's delayed. I'm not saying that, but he's just not as far along, which is actually a good thing in a lot of ways, considering of all the success that he's had. He's going to get bigger and stronger. He just is. It's going to take time. A great example of this is actually Steph Curry. Steph Curry was super skinny, and he still is on the thin side, but it took him years 
to actually gain weight and to grow and mature. It wasn't until he was like 26, 27, 28 that he started to actually put on more muscle. So that I just totally reject that 1000%. This idea, if he could have, he would have. That's insanity. That's absolute insanity. But besides that, they didn't bring this up, and so I'll bring it up. I made a similar video uh, talking about Jaden Daniels uh, a couple days ago, I think, at this point. But you could see, clearly see um, that Jaden is going to a great spot, okay? Cliff Kingsbury is such a scapegoat with Arizona that it's not even funny. Um, if you want to make the argument that he's not a good head coach, that he wasn't, that he was unable to kind of just do what a head coach needs to do. I'm open to that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I do not think you can deny his deep understanding of offense, of, you know, of how to run an offense, of how to execute an offense, of how to get the best out of a quarterback. And someone in the comment section wanted to keep talking about college. You had a losing record in college, college, college. And I'm like, I do not care. I do not care what someone does in college at this point. Once you have years in the NFL, that is your resume, right? Just like how once you get a job, once you graduate college, like they no longer care about your GPA or what classes you took. It does not matter. Your resume and your is your work experience now. That's all that matters, okay? Or if you didn't go to college, it's like no, no one cares what you did in junior high or high school. If you're a 35-year-old man, they don't care that you were installing, you know, air conditioning units when you were 15. It does not matter at this point. It does not matter matter so i so like enough with that like i love people keep wanting to bring up things that are no longer relevant not to mention com college is so much more complex in that regard than in the nfl in terms of there's so many more moving parts there's you're so much more at the mercy of 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 the, just like the 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 how college is run in terms of your ability to get and recruit players um especially these days how to keep the players um you're at the mercy of it's just you you can't overcome so many issues if, if it was that easy then we would have seen tom brady dominate in college we would have seen patrick mahomes dominate in college we would see these guys being the heisman trophy winners you know um winning year after year in college setting all these records we would see their greatness in college like we see all see their greatness in the pros and we do not okay we do not so uh, that right there is just such nonsense to me so um not even gonna address it any further than that but the reality is, is, and I read this in my one other video, but it's worth reading again, is it's worth mentioning that now this is Cliff Kingsbury, that he took over the number 32 ranked offense in the NFL that only scored 225 points on the way to a 3-13 and the year before. So that improvement to 16th and 361 points in his first season with a rookie quarterback is impressive. 5-10-1 to 8-8 eight and eight, and the 13th overall offense in year two. Year three, he's 11-6 and six and in the playoffs with the 11th best offense. Then the disaster that was 2022, 30 different players on IR throughout the season with 21 of them missing four plus games to IR with about 12 to 13 missing a majority of the season injured and a few who were the entire season. And then you have some huge names that were there. And also you had other players that were suspended as well. But I mean, you can see Humphreys, Hudson, Ertz, Brown, um, Kyler, obviously, Justin Pugh, who I actually know, um, uh, uh, Moore, Murphy. Like, these are real things that you can expect a coach to be able to just magically overcome when you're playing like the backup of a backup of a backup, right? I mean, like, it just, it, they were just, they were just decimated. But he absolutely commanded that offense and did great things with Kyler Murray, who, let's face it, is not an easy quarterback to get along with. I mean, that much is just true, okay? He's not the easiest quarterback to get along with. So I think what Cliff Kingsbury was able to do in Arizona is actually really high level, really high level. And I think he's a great offensive mind. And I think he can be a great offensive coordinator. Again, if you want to question his ability to lead an entire team, that's okay. I'm open to that. But fortunately, if you're a Commanders fan, you don't have to worry about that. You have Dan Quinn, who you know for a fact can lead a team. And now it's just Cliff. You just got to worry about this offense. Just execute the offense. And Dan Quinn's going to trust, he's going to be able to master the defense, which we know he can do. He's consistently been able to do. So you're going to have a good defense. 
and you're going to have Cliff Kingsbury, who should be able to pull the strings and make a good offense. And Jaden Daniels is a great quarterback who I think can do great things in the NFL. Now, you do have to ask yourself, like, some of the issues that the just from a roster standpoint, right? Like, I'm not saying that I think the commanders can just step in and immediately just dominate or make it to the playoffs and win playoff games. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to go as far as to say that because I really don't know. Um, I, I look at this team on like a one to two year plan. I put any team that's trying to grow on a one to two year plan. I don't think it's ever fair to be like, they need to do this today. Like, I, I just don't agree with that. These things take time, especially if you're looking at a roster that you're like, okay, listen, we got some great coaches. We got a great quarterback, but like, we need some other pieces to be able to put this together here, right? You can't just slap Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes on the Carolina Panthers. Then magically the Carolina Panthers are Super Bowl bound. Like it takes time. It takes a minute. You got to get other pieces. But with all that said, I do think Jaden is in a position to have success sooner rather than later. They're also the luxury of this division. Um, Whereas Caleb is going to have to go against the Packers, the Lions, the Vikings, like those can be really brutal games. Whereas the Commanders, who knows, maybe the Eagles are actually continuing to be a disaster. I don't think so, but let's say maybe they do. Maybe, uh, you know, that they really do just continue what they were doing last season and it's just a disaster. The Cowboys, I do not think that they are going in the right direction. And now you have Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn will know Every single weakness of Dak Prescott. And he will now be able to execute a game plan against the Dallas Cowboys, which I think will could will tremendously help the commanders. Um, and then you're talking about the Giants, which let's face it, who the heck are the Giants? Where do we think the Giants are going this season? So Jaden Daniels should be able to feast in at least a handful of those games. And he doesn't even have to come away with wins in all of those games, but he should be able to play pretty darn good in those games. And those are divisional games. Um, and the schedule as a whole for Washington should be somewhat easier relative to the bears, um, and Caleb Williams, but what Caleb has going for him is the narrative is all the energy is all the hype is hard knocks, all of that. And as we know, all these awards are so much more narrative based and what people are saying, what are the conversations, who are we talking about? And the other reality is, is that as Colin talked about the Chicago bears have a massive fan base. And the NFL wants that media so desperately. Colin even went as far as saying that the Chicago Bears will like save us from politics, essentially, because this is going to be such an intense election year. And so a lot of people are going to be watching that type of content rather than football content. And that, you know, if the Bears can be good, that the networks are going to rely on it so much because it's such a massive market. And I know when I make Chicago Bears videos, I get, a, you know, a ton of views, a ton of engagement. Um, and it's a lot of fun because I want to make videos that people want to see and engage with. So you have to imagine that if the Chicago Bears have any type of momentum and Caleb Williams has any type of momentum, the media is it's just going to be every day. Caleb, 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 Caleb. That is what Jaden is going up against. So that it that that makes it harder. Doesn't mean that Jaden can't because I you know like um I I think Washington obviously and the Commanders have a his, you know historic fan base as well and a very passionate fan base as well. But it's just all a matter of how does the media handle it, right? Will we see regular stories? I can see if Jaden Daniels actually balls out and plays really well as well as Caleb then the media will try to use that to kind of go off each other and it will be this constant comparison right you know this or that this or that um one or the other and I can see that then kind of helping each other and then it'll be like you're either going to be you know team Jaden or, or team Caleb so it's going to be fun, honestly. And that is what CJ Stroud kind of had going for him because not only did he go to a team that people weren't really expecting to do much, so when he did play good and when he did win, all that attention and momentum was on him. And then you had, you know, Bryce Young and, and the Panthers do nothing. So it was like there was, there was no stories, you know, like, and, and quite frankly, they don't have a big enough fan base. So if, even if you go back in time and look at those videos, there were some videos where they were like, what is going on with the Panthers? Is he that good? But they did not talk about that day after day, week after week. It just doesn't get the clicks. It doesn't get the views. They're not a big enough fan base, and it wasn't interesting enough of a story. It was like, yeah, don't really know what to do with this. He's not really that good. This team's really not that good. They're kind of a disaster. Their owner's wonky. They're firing their coaches. They have no weapons. Not much to talk about. But CJ Stroud, we can talk about. We can talk about. We can talk about. Content, 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 content. So he gets all the attention. Unless Caleb Williams ends up being a complete bust, which even if he is, that it'll still generate content because it is the Chicago Bears. It was such a hyped up thing. No matter what, 
there is going to be Chicago Bears content. Um, so yeah, just going to be interesting. Um, but I definitely absolutely think Jaden can win Rookie of the Year. Um, I think it'll just all come down to um, how fast can Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury write this ship? Because I do think that they are going in the right direction. Um, and I think Jaden can have a tremendous amount of success. And I'm not buying into this idea what Nick is saying, where he's just saying, I do not think Jaden Daniels ultimately will just, essentially what he's saying is he's just not going to, he doesn't believe that he's going to be successful in the NFL. If you really kind of listen to what he's saying. Um, and I just do not buy into that personally. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think that Jaden could win Rookie of the Year? Um, do you think he could just have a better career or let's just say better season than Caleb Williams? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.